Good afternoon, everybody. Um, good evening for those who are not joining from Kenya. Good morning for others joining from elsewhere. It, it is indeed a pleasure for me to welcome you to this webinar today, this afternoon and this evening. I'm honored that we have a wonderful lady to speak with us this evening. Ms. Marion Gadoga Mwangi, a lady I look up to, a lady I really admire in terms of her leadership journey and her willingness to share of herself. So thank you so much for joining because without you, I know that the conversation will not be, uh, uh, will not be rich, but with you, it is that much richer. Allow me to introduce to you our moderator this evening, and our moderator is one of our members, Mrs. Winnie Pertet. Winnie, as you know, is a HR professional with a deep, deep interest in organizational development. Winnie is a certified organization designer. She has insurance experience, having been the group HR of uh, UAP Old Mutual Group. Winnie has also been the um, inaugural chair of the National Employment uh, Bureau, and she currently serves as the chief executive officer of Serian Consulting Limited. And so without wasting too much time, just to thank you on behalf of the Board of Women on Boards Network for joining us this afternoon. And now I hand over to Winnie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Catherine. Ladies, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker for this evening, Ms. Uh, Marion Gatoga Mwangi. And I'd like, I'm excited actually, when I read through her CV, I was very excited to uh, just share it uh, this afternoon uh, with you. And so I'm going to read as it is, so just that, to make sure that I don't miss out on anything important because it's all exciting. Marion is the current uh, managing director of BOC Kenya. Uh, PLC. This is the leading gases and engineering solutions company that's owned by the Lin, uh, Lin Group AG and listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. She is a long-serving trustee of a Palm House Foundation, an education trust that has shaped the lives of more than 900 bright and needy secondary school young, uh, young people. Uh, she's also a council member of the Super Brands East Africa, Marion is also a full member of the Women Corporate Directors, WCD, serving in the Programs Committee. She has over 20 years experience in senior management roles with expertise in lean manufacturing, performance management, and trade marketing. Over the last few years, she has a proven track record of transitioning businesses in turnaround situations across FMCGs, commodity, dairy and professional services sectors. Over the span of her career, she has held executive positions at Nestle Foods, Kenya Limited, Bayer East Africa, and general manager roles at Cadbury Kenya and East Africa, which is also Kraft Food. She's worked at Unga Limited, uh, Pomelat Botswana, and the Association of Certified Chartered, uh, uh, Chartered Accountants, ACCA. Uh, Marin has held full p &L responsibility with business annual net revenues, listen to this, ranging from 100,000 USD to 1 billion USD. And she has been the lead for process and business turnaround. As the managing uh, director of BOC Kenya, Marion is a permanent member of all the constituted committees, uh, one remuneration and retirement, nomination and corporate governance, and audit and risk. Um, uh, as uh, that is together, this is within the board, uh, board, uh, board of directors. Now, during her tenure, she's implemented continual uh, improvement, Kaizen, and an end-to-end -end performance management system, which is HK, which have dramatically impacted the culture and business indicators positively. Uh, in terms of her executive education, uh, she has what uh, she has climbed to Lactis International Management and Business Excellence, ESOP Europe. Another one is a Women Directors Leadership Summit with the Strathmore Business School, as well as Cranford School of Management. In addition to that, 
uh, Marion is a practitioner, she has a practitioner diploma in executive coaching with the Academy of Executive Coaches, AOEC. She's also um, got certification in international systemic team coaching. And this is a new field uh, uh, in industry, which is also quite critical for organizations and individuals going forward. Marion is also a graduate from uh, inter uh, in international business administration, uh, USIU Africa. She's passionate about building manufacturing and business process excellence in Africa and in driving lean solutions across multiple business sectors. Marion was also recognized as top over 40 for a period of four years by the Business Daily. And she won the Global Community Service Award at Craft Food for impacting her community. She's also a sought after mentor, executive coach, as well as a public speaker. Marion, she's an active um, Rotarian and Toastmaster. She's also a golfer and she's a golfing, uh, she has membership at Karen Country Club. She's a founder member of the Capital Club and a life member of the Kenya Red Cross, uh, of the Kenya Red Cross. Ladies, that is quite something. That's quite a, a CV. And um, I must say, Marion, we're really honored to have you with us this afternoon. Uh, ladies, from wherever you are, kindly, uh, you can record your reactions, but you can also give her virtual clapping as I welcome her to take us through the session. Welcome, Marion. Thank you, Willie. Thank you, Catherine. You know, when I was growing up, Anybody who was older than me, or who was in the neighborhood and had some responsibilities, or was a little older than my older sibling, disciplined us. They participated in our upbringing. I think I share this story that when you went home and said you were punished by a teacher, your mother gave you a repeat punishment. In fact, the memories I have of growing up and of my mother, who is, who is an admirable, strong woman, is that she had a support system. She had a system of raising six children, most of the time alone as my father was traveling, and she did other responsibilities. She was on the board of the primary school, and she was also a an active member of the church in a CAC session, which actually, is simulated on the board on the boards as we sit on today. And so I asked myself uh, later when, when Catherine invited me to speak to you today, what's the difference between the time that I was growing up and the time that we have, have today? And the difference is really that our parents and our families had a support system. And they're very, very keen to share some of the lessons are borrowed from that history in today's, in, today's, in today's world. When you look at our world today, and I hope the screen moves, when you look, look at our, our life, lives today, we exist in, in about eight or so. Marion, are you sharing your screen? I am. I just want to move it. Let me see whether it can move. There okay. we go. Yes, you can see it now. So the question I asked myself, why a personal support system? It's because when we're living in this big city, our, complex, our complexities and the experiences we have as, as mothers, as wives, as board members, as business people, is quite different from the system that we grew up knowing. And therefore I want to encourage us today to establish a support system that can exist in this modern life. Each of us has a varied, varied support needs. We all have different uh, family cycles. I have three young children, two of them going to online school and one of them just about to go to high school. So my needs are very different for the next person. And adapting to the changes in our lives is, is, is quite a critical skill that we we can all acquire. And I was just thinking that in our lives, we need nine to 10 personal advisors. At WDLS, we learned that you can actually establish a personal board of advisors. 
because we spend quite a bit of time doing corporate work and, and working on boards and we can do that for our personal lives. And because we are women and, and it's, it's, it's a safe thing to say, we are the light of the world. I say, I say the Bible, in the Bible, Matthew 5, 14 to 15 says, you're the light of the world. A city cannot be hid and located on a mountain. So we cannot hide our leadership skills. Even when we try, we are still lighting, but sometimes we try to do it under, under the table. So this eight to nine personal advisors can help us to navigate through life as, as family members, as, as Christians or whatever belief systems we've got, as, as people with a, with a health and well-being mindset, as people working in, this, in our community, in the things we do and the things that you want to develop ourselves. So today I just wanted to share with you my personal uh, support system. And hopefully when we are discussing, I will learn a few things on how to do this differently. So, and personal planning is part of those eight components you have in your life. And the way that I look at it is that you, you start with a vision and do an annual plan. I know it is quite old fashioned to say that this is a new year, I'm gonna do new resolutions. But I discovered about 10 to 15 years ago that when you do a vision and you do not plan your, your monthly, your weekly and your daily plan actions, you are not likely to achieve what you've planned to do. And I like this Japanese proverb, the vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare, actually, because anybody who comes to you with a plan, you will hop onto it and you will carry on. Somebody will draw your life for you somewhere else and then you will adopt it. And so the system that I have created is that once I have a vision or a vision board, because I actually have it written down, I then create a monthly plan and a weekly plan and a daily plan. I think when she said Kaizen practitioner in my introduction, I said a lot of ladies will understand me when they see that I actually have an execution, an execution platform and an execution practice. Because really the only way you can achieve your goals and the way you, know you can create a support system that is, that is very, very adaptable is to, is to keep execution as the main part of it, that you will do something about something every day. Catherine spoke earlier about my Friday evening because it is routinely penciled in a, in a, in a diary that Friday evening will be an activity that I will do with, with my children who are actually the priority in, in my life at this, at this point, point in time. So this, this, this personal support uh, system and in each area that I spoke earlier, you can have actually an individual or, or a person or a process that you use to help you keep a balanced life. As ladies, we have many, many jobs that we do, many expectations that are held, are held towards us. And we can only succeed when we have a written down plan that, that is executable. I've learned a lot from the ladies on this call. I know some of them are, are listening in. I actually have learned a lot from Catherine as well. When I see her presenting, has her, her, her board evaluations and other work she does on boards. And I think she's balancing also her, her, herself as a, as, a, as a lady, herself as a mother. And many of you ladies have, have a part of this support system, some knowingly and some un unknowingly. And I like to encourage you as well to really put that system of years in a vision or a visual that is memorable and make sure that it is based on some values that you hold dear. And today I just wanted to share with you the, the work in progress that I have personally, which is rootedness and, and just to stay with integrity even as industry and as, as the work we do becomes more and more difficult. And the baobab tree, which is what you can see now, is a depiction of, of what I'm hoping uh, to, to achieve and what I hope will inspire ladies today. That rootedness is, is, is what most trees do, but a baobab tree is especially rooted because it can, it can, it can live 2,000 years. It can live five years without actually new sources of water because it has a retention of water that makes it live for very many years. And I'd, I'd hope to be rooted rooted in integrity, rooted in, in, um, in being a stable and reliable person, and that the values that I show up above the tree will continue to show 
in the work that I do and in the service that I do in, in the boards that, that, are, that, are, that I'll be serving now and in the future. And resilience is our portion. Resilience is what we have been taught. We have grown up being resilient and, uh, and generous. Today is just an act of generosity that we sit here today and talk about how do you create a personal system that helps you to do your life with other people with, in it. And then to also aspire to have an impact, especially on other ladies, an impact in the industries that we are that we are working, that people will say that when a lady comes onto this role, when a lady or a woman has been seen on this board, there has been impact in our society. And that when, when, when you look at whatever it is that you choose to be your, your visual, you can remember to show up in that, in that manner. Ladies, when I was introduced earlier, I, th I thought that's quite a, a, a well articulated uh, voice that Winnie had there. And I, I recognized myself in that, in that description, just going back to the way that I view how I was raised by, by, by the society around me and the system around me. Today, if somebody came and disciplined my child, how would I react? How would I react if an uncle or a complete stranger took, took something and, and managed my children in my absence? Would I be upset or would I have the same response that I saw uh, growing up? To be honest, I don't know. But what I know is that there's no one of us who can succeed and can continue to, to hold up and to do business and to sit on boards without the support of others. And today is just the opportunity for us to discuss how to continue supporting each other as ladies, continue supporting other people, younger ladies who are coming up in the organizations and continue allowing people into your life to help you with, with the various tasks that you have. I just give you an example. When I had my last born son, who is six years old today, and I was moving to Botswana to lead the Pamela to Botswana as the as a general manager, I actually had an au pair who went shopping and who went to do uh, the, the program and the ma manuals that I need to support my children in their homework. And I didn't feel really that I was not serving my role as a mother and as a wife at that time. But I, I kind of feel shy to share that information with my mother because she'll say, did you actually send somebody shopping to the market instead of doing it yourself? Because she did all those things herself. But I think in our time, we need to accept that kind of help. And, and once again, just to accept that there are people who are willing to help each one of us. I, have, I personally am a, am a beneficiary of women who have gone ahead of me and opened big doors uh, for me, and they prepared people that I've led for the leadership of, 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 of a woman. And I hope that that shares a little bit of light on how to create a personal support system using mentors and using people around your wheel of life and accepting help from wherever it's coming from and actually asking for it. And finally, when it comes to serving on boards or doing things that are outside the work that, that you've been assigned, the most, the most useful way that I have learned is to ask people directly for help. You can ask somebody like uh, Winnie or Catherine, I would like to do this sort of service. Could you please recommend me? And they will, because people, people respond when they, when they are asked. And um, I think our lives and personally my life has been uh, supported by a system, a system of, of, of people who come and, and help me be effective in the roles that I do. And I just thank you for this opportunity to just share the overarching method that I've used to balance my life and to look for, for support across, across the different wheels of my life. And I hope that it's something that you would be able to consider and can, we can discuss now in, in the next couple of minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marion. Um, for me, I think that was, I could see some bulbs popping out in my head in terms of um, where I am and what it is that I really want to do. But that's not my place right now. Uh, we're going into Q&A uh, time, but I'd like to recognize the presence of Jail Oyeke. 
Marion, your classmate from uh, USIU. She's called in all the way from Switzerland. Joel, welcome. And anybody else who's from outside uh, Kenya, welcome. Karibu sana, as we say, uh, as we say here in Africa. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Now, um, I have one question. As you think about the other questions that you like to ask, somebody asked, Marion, you talked about having eight to nine people to support you. What should their skills mix be to give you optimum support? For the for the eight to nine supporters, I actually have ten. Uh, just just to be just to be quite open. Wow. The one that supports me with my family life and with the with the raising of my children is is exactly that. Somebody who is a parent themselves and has raised children the age of my children. So they they would be um, a mom of, of of boys and 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 a girl going into teenage teenagehood. So that's that's the qualification of the family one. The one that helps me with the reinvention and development is an executive coach. Is a coach that trained um, to help me with complex situations that I may see in the office that that they would look at would look at with a balanced view without giving me advice. And and sometimes I, I really want advice. So I will also have a mentor that that I will go to and ask what to do do if you are me. But I also have. Um, uh, friends that I, I like to associate with, to relax, relax uh, uh, along with, and there will be one, one person that I would like to take a nice journey, travel, travel abroad with. And then I'll have somebody in, in, um, in the health and well-being pillar who, is, who, is, who, who knows how to do, to do health proposals that are not damaging or life-changing, that I will not lose weight tomorrow, because I believe in little steps. I'm a cousin practitioner. I believe in building up steps to to something and then of course i'll have the spiritual person who will likely be uh, somebody with some spiritual knowledge so the qualifications of this nine to ten is is just really related to my wheel of life so my encouragement is to build a system of supporters around your wheel of life so you don't give up any of any area of your life and be left feeling empty or exhausted or unbalanced and that's the risk we face as women we we, we can face the risk of putting work or putting your career as the main thing and then lose, lose out on all the other roles that you still have, have to play. So those are the qual uh, qualifications. I don't interview them. Uh, I suppose that you, you can choose your way of choosing your mentors, but people are so willing to, to say, can I, can I rely on you in this area? And can I call you every, can, I, can we schedule a, a four calls in a year? I have people that have scheduled call, to calls twice a year just to catch up and to and to see whether what I'm thinking about the next two years is, is the right path. So there's a lot of people and there's a lot of resources available to us to us today. I hope that answers the question, Winnie. Um, I, I guess so. Now, I, I, sometimes we joke about this as women that as a woman, I need a wife, you know, <laughs> to be able to to balance out everything else that uh, you know, we as women do. It, it, it's not easy. And, and I like the example you've given as about um, a support uh, about your children. Perhaps you may comment about asking for help. That those of us who are just not able to ask for help, what, what's your advice on that? How do I go about asking for help? And as I say this, ladies, uh, I'm, I'm looking out for anybody with questions so they can raise their hands. And you're not alone in asking for help because when you're asking for help, you you imagine that it's going to be somebody may say no. First of all, that's a big risk, and also that you feel that you may get exposed to something that you're not aware of. And it's actually an unfounded fear based on the fact that when you go asking for help um, for for a, a soft area like my daughter is just going into into high school. How do I manage her? Um, how do I manage the conversations with her? And how do I keep close to her? And and how have you managed? People are willing to help in 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 that way. When it comes to executive help and help on um, on managing big board issues, I will actually just prepare in in a, a situation in writing and 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 prepare for for a conversation to actually ask for that specific specific counsel or specific help. And then disclose the amount of time investment that person will will have on on, on that particular area, and I found that very few people have said no to 
direct asking. Actually, they feel that they feel honored. But the thing about about asking for help is, is, is also embedded in the tree that I showed earlier. If you are generous with people, you help people, you give them information, you don't withhold opportunity because there's, there's enough for everybody. P people give back to you in, in, in bigger measure than you actually are giving out. And for me, I found that to be quite true. One of my princip big principles is the principle of, of, of uh, reaping and sowing. And you reap, you, you continue, reaping good behavior, good habits, kindness, generosity, um, information, like what we are doing today. And, and you, you find that it comes back, uh, as they say in the Bible, pressed down, uh, overpowering. And, and, and that's, 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 the, that's the real the principle. Okay. Um, Marion, to, uh, to be able to open up and, and ask for help, I'm just following up on that question. Um, one may be, uh, may be naturally not inclined to be able to, to speak out. And here I'm talking about uh, women who are introverted. What's your advice on that? How would you advise, what would you tell them to go about seeking these support systems? When you believe it or not, and a lot of ladies here will not believe it, I'm actually very, I'm actually introverted. I've done several personality profiles that show that I am, I, I'm an introvert. So and the way I started is I started with where I am, where I was with, with the friends that were around me. I mean, I've, 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 I've got a friend who I worked with at Nestle uh, called Esther Mongai, a generous woman who, who was approachable, we shared an office. Mm -hmm. And I started there and I started to say, I, I, wanna, I wanna grow to become a, a manager, for example, how would you help? And she would generously, just just uh, help me so she would she, she would listen to me and even sometimes volunteer to guide me on the next step and i just you know bless her soul because because she's she, she really really gave me personal courage so one of the areas that is on this chart is actually reinvention and personal development if you are introverted and you're shy and you have um uh, any any challenges of personal personal courage you can actually develop that skill there's, there's numerous resources in books, in, in podcasts, to develop that skill of how to, how to ask, how to ask uh, for help. And I certainly have, have, have spent uh, quite a bit of time looking for virtues that I would like to develop, especially the one of being more patient as I'm, as I'm, as I'm, as I'm parenting. Um, so the, I, would, I would suggest, and I'm sure somebody else would have a different response on this group, that you hone that skill because there's no one who can do, who can do life alone uh, in, in the, with the pressures that we have in, in life today. Thanks, thanks, Marion. Catherine wanted to say or ask something. Over to you, Catherine. Um, thank you, Marion. Very, very uh, succinct and to the point. Um, I just want you to touch on the point um, about vulnerability that many of us uh, fear to share or to ask for help because we think we'll be vulnerable thereafter. You know, she, she'll start talking about me out there. She will spread my weak points, so on and so forth. H how does one overcome that? And, and is that a valid fear? I, I look at vulnerability as, as actually a strength um, because vulnerability is your journey to, to being authentic. Um, and to being to being a real person, people actually respond to those who are authentic. There's, there's a very powerful book that I've read called "Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty," and it relates to all of us. The day that somebody calls you and you can predict what they want, you already know that they, they that that this person is calls me only when they need this. It gives you an uncomfortable feeling. So for, vulnerability can be covered by you continuously investing in relationships when you do not need anything, especially when, when you don't need anything, when you need to just check in with somebody, when you're not always asking for, for, for something, that you invest in relationships and invest in relationships by being generous and by giving of your knowledge and your experiences freely without expectation. So if you feel vulnerable, and, and I don't encourage that you, you go and say that uh, you, you you did something uh, um, 
that you got beat, that you beat up your husband yesterday. You know, you don't <laughs> want to do that because everybody's going to know about it tomorrow. Um, Catherine, I'm not suggesting that you do any such stuff. But um, if, if, if you have things that are very, very confidential and personal to you, you might want to actually consider uh, telling somebody who is a professional, like, like a counselor. I've always said to people that going for counseling or going for, for, for support with a professional counselor is, is, is a measure of, the mat of your own maturity. And, and I know many, many senior C, female CEOs that I follow today actually have on their nine to 10 personal advisors, a counselor, a counselor who, who will keep their confidence and who will not expose them. So the fear of exposure is real, uh, is real Catherine. And if you ever feel there's something that you do not want spread in the world and it, it really is, is, is something that's dear to you, you can, you can call on somebody who, is, who, who will be a safe bet. And you yourself, then choose to be the person that doesn't spread stories about other women as a, as a person of virtue, as a, as a person of virtue. And I, and I like that you're shaking your head, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, is asking a question here. Um, just hold on, sorry, that seems to have gone off. Yeah, she's asking whether you're currently mentoring any young people and whether there's an opportunity for you to mentor somebody that should re she would recommend. I am, I am, I am indeed. I have, I have a day in, in my, in my monthly plan, I have a, a day, the third Saturday of the month that is, that is secured for coaching conversations. So I take six, six uh, to seven people for an hour each on, on, on that Saturday, actually schedule it in January and then share the, share the advert. And I'm very happy to see Jaya so I can share that advert, advert with her. I do two of them uh, free because I mentor the, the students of the Palmer's Foundation generally and I schedule them through the year. And then I will normally have um, another young lady or middle manager lady that, that I'm, I'm, I'm mentoring. And I find that actually they come and mentor me more uh, than, than, than I do. So I'm very, very happy to share my, my, my contacts with Jail and to speak to her again to, to, for exactly that reason. Thank you, Catherine. I know it's too much. Yes. Okay, uh, Catherine, I'll direct this one to you. Um, someone would like to know whether the women on boards has a mentoring component. Um, thank you for that question. Yes, we do. We do have a mentoring uh, component. And as Marion was speaking, I was just uh, thinking how I'm going to convince her to become one of our mentors. So yes, we do. We are starting um, all the way from age. 12. So uh, children, both boys and girls, can become members of uh, the Women on Boards Junior Wing from around age 12 to round about the time they complete campus. And under that wing, we do mentor them. But even after that, uh, for the uh, members of women, for, for the older members of Women on Boards Network, we do have a mentorship program. Some of it is local, some of it is with uh, our our partners in Malaysia who are lead women. Okay. So yes, do contact us, and we we are happy to to point you in the right direction. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. There's another question here for you, Marion. Is it possible for an advisor to fall in? more than one of the categories of the segments within the will. And are there times that you can leave, outlive an advisor? And when do you know when to get one uh, or change roles to become an advisor to them? And the third question as uh, she's asking, is there, is there mutual advisorship? Yes, actually no one mentor who is cutting across work and reinvention and recreation so you can have a you can have a mentor that class and you can actually cluster this wheel of life in in a way that suits you so you can have you can have a mentor that cuts across uh, and in fact in this time when we have very little time you can you can combine um some 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 of these roles roles together i have i have a friend who is a parent in the school my my boys go to who i also do my 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 works my works with so those are those, those are two two sort of roles that we do. We talk about parenting and then we also talk about health, health, health and well-being. 
And just like you, your life has panned out. I mean, today, I don't know how many people still have their primary school friends. You grow, you grow and grow into new friendships. I mean, I've met many ladies in, 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 uh, in my 40s that have such a huge impact in my life that I didn't know when I was young. So transitioning um, mentor to mentor is, 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 is a normal curve and it's actually quite, it's, it's encouraged because you can also have somebody who, who, may, who may, you may start feeling that they hold you back because your advancement is not at the same rate as, as, as they are ad advising you. So that question had three, three, three components. I must have missed the third one, uh, Winnie, if I haven't answered it. Uh, no, somebody just asked, is there an opportunity for mutual advisorship? Can I be an advisor? Mutual advisorship? Yes, yeah, someone, can I advise my advisor? Yes, yes, and it, 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 it happens. They, they, we learned in WDLS the reverse mentor. So you go into a mentorship relationship, and then when you're with them, you actually find out that they actually have much more knowledge on some area than you do. And maturity for us women is accepting those both ro those those roles, those transitional roles, that somebody who I was going to mentor, I'm not more senior or better than them, but I go into that relationship with humility so that I can also learn. But there's no mentoring relationship that I've gotten into where I haven't learned something. So you can have um, the same iron sharpening iron uh, relationship with, 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 with somebody and, 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 gain, and gain from it. Actually, this, the biggest secret in this specter of personal support system is the more, the more you give of yourself, the more you, you, you learn. In fact, today I've learned a new term of, of mutual, mutual mentoring. I've learned something just now. As as we, we, we as we've spoken. Okay, and and uh, what would you advise, especially younger women? And and I have no, I'm I, I'm not saying it, but I have something against the younger women. But how would you advise a younger woman, perhaps even in her twenties, who is seeking to grow? What would you? How would you? What would you tell her in terms of? who to pick as an advisor? Because you may find uh, that there are those who have a thousand and one friends and, uh, and they are all her friends. How would they pick out the advisors? Um, you know, I've got one young, 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 upcoming young woman in my house. So, and I see, I see, I see that as well. And, and there's, a, there's a book, I, I, read, I read quite a lot. I, I think all of us who went to WDRS know we, we have 40 books per year. We read a book a week. So there's a book I read the other day called Atomic Habits. And, and these young people, if you say to them that there's no, there's, they, you cannot create success within a day. You have to have small steps, a thousand steps before you reach a certain stage. And better start now because you still have to take that 1,000 step journey from the beginning. If you just show them by the way you live your lives, that you built your career because of uh, systematic um, routines that you've developed within your life, then they will see, they will see you as, as, as leading by example. So the young people today have so much pressure because they, they can read, they can Google, they can, they, can, they, 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 they can be parented by total strangers. You find that children who are 18 years old have somebody they're following that is actually taking over your role as their, as their mom. And that's the biggest, that one of the biggest concerns we have as mothers of young girls. Um, and but this Atomic Habits book um, shares something I really believe in, that it is the small, small steps that you take that come up with, with big ideas. And you, you keep telling them that, and they listen. They don't act as if they listen, but you keep repeating, you repeat, you repeat and eventually they, they, they will listen. Even you and your youth um, were, were probably seen as, as, as having too many friends, but in the end, there's a way that your life turned out because of the messages that were repeated and repeated to you or the examples that you saw as you grew up. So that, that, that would be what I would respond. I'm sure there's other responses that I can come from the team. Um, thank you very much, Marion. At this point, uh, and, and thank you very much for the um, responding to the questions. Also, uh, to, uh, to your presentation as well, uh, for me, what really stood out and what I'm hearing from you is the whole element of Kaizen, the continuous improvement, but specifically the deliberate effort in terms of picking out uh, women or people around our lives who will be of use, for lack of a better word, 
but people who will walk with us in our journey in terms of whatever um, whatever it is that, uh, that 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 we seek to do. I liked your visual, your visual, uh, the, the baobab tree, and and all the values around that. And I think to me that's really uh, it's a great concept. Looking at it and saying what do I find around the baobab tree, the deep rootedness for me that was quite um, that was quite an eye opener. So I really want to thank you very much. But I'd like to hand over to Nkirote to take us through the next session. Thanks a lot. Winnie, can I ask one before you hand over? Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, Marion, um, one of the things I have come across, uh, particularly working with uh, women, is that many times we want to be affirmed as women. Um, and my question is, you have led women over a long period of time. What are some of the... Um, undervalued uh, traits that you have come across um, uh, generally um, in your journey of leadership? Um, Catherine, I, I just put my video back. Yes, I've, I've, I've led women and men for, 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 for quite a time and many times older, older men and older, older, older ladies. And one of the things that actually surprises me is the, is, the, is the depth of knowledge and the depth of experience that women have, that they, that they undervalue, that they, that they don't talk about. So, for example, you give somebody a, um, a project and say, you know, do this end to end. Um, I, I will not be um, asking about it until, until you're ready to share. And when they come up with a product, product, you think this person should actually be the head of this department, actually. So I think it's that, what we were speaking about earlier, that women are quite shy to promote themselves and to speak about their competencies. Many times, and many ladies who have worked with me know this, that when I advertise a job and they don't apply, they're in deep trouble. Because they're always waiting to be 90% ready. And their counterparts sitting next to them are 5% ready and they say, yes, yes, of course I can do that. And I always say to them, apply for the job because you will get interview experience if not the job. And, and so my, my, and also to treat those women with moderation um, and respect and being, being generous as a woman is not only kindness in things. Being generous is being sensitive to the way the woman is feeling based on the messaging she has had at home or as she grew up and not telling her what's wrong with you, don't you, don't you want to apply, but asking her, I, I see this about you and I see that you, you, you're quite good at this. Why don't you apply for this job and mm -hmm. I will support you. And then I live up to that word. I think one of the, the biggest um, impact that I want to have in, in my working life is that when women came to me, I helped them. I helped them not by word, but in real action. I say to them, you know, uh, change your presentation. I did real, real help, not just saying that but I really really give them real tangible 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 help and it's part of my values as you can see can see on the tree a lot of people don't know that this baobab tree actually has the most beautiful purple flower um, and you can't see it when you look at this 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 dry looking tree that it can produce such beauty even in its resilience and in its age because it can live up to 2000 years so I, I just, I just, this, this reminds me of what, what I want to be and what I want to be remembered for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, Marion. Uh, as, as I was just uh, winding up, we've got a few more questions that have come through. Uh, one of them is, how does one identify an appropriate mentor? Is there a database where one can get one? Okay. Um, so I'll just share how I've identified mine. I, I've identified my mine through meeting them in action so if you see somebody and you and you feel drawn to ask them something don't stop whatever is calling you towards uh, asking them um, for, for for support in an area is real so and I'm, i was quite shy about asking uh, asking ladies and i've, got, I've had quite in, some people supporting me directly and women that i've really really admired and and sort of uh, spoken to them just so that I can, I can, I can learn from them. So this, 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 these women, like me, for example, who are available to help other women um, almost all the time. And there's, there's, you know, other, other professionals like, like yourself, Winnie, who is, a, who is an OD expert and who has had 
numerous years of experience in HR who would think of something in, in, in two seconds without, without actually researching because it's something that you've done for many years. So I don't, I don't know of a, of, 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 of a database. I know of, um, of, of, of people who are in consultancy that do uh, recommend, recommend uh, people to place you in, 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 in places, even boards. But I, I, I think to, to, to build, because the reason I say it's personal is because it's personal, because you have to like that person. Um, and, and, and liking somebody is in, in your eyes. I mean, liking the beauty is in the eyes of the, of, the, of the beholder. You're the one who will feel that I like this person, I'd like to talk to them. So I don't know a database, but through your life, whenever you go to a conference, whenever you go to a meeting, if you see somebody who has an attribute that you like, ask them. And they, will, and, they will, and they will definitely help you. Nobody says no to a, a request as in humility. Uh, over and over again during the sessions that we've had for Women on Boards Network, there's a statement that keeps coming through uh, for women to step up. And, and, and to your point, in terms of uh, seeking an advisor, I, I, I hear then uh, what I'm hearing is the ability to step up and essentially seek for help. Um, I have two more questions and a comment. Uh, somebody has asked how often or how frequently can I change my advisor? And it depends on your, your needs, your, the needs, the needs that, you, the, that you have and the, and the intensity of the need that you have. I've once had an advisor to, 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 to support me to a, a, a apply for a position in a, in a BMO, in an industry in, in Botswana, just to understand the culture. And, and that was a once-off once of, uh, uh, mentoring. So we met maybe twice, and, and after, after, after I was, I was uh, considered for the role, I thanked the person and said if I needed some, some, something else, I, I would come back to them, and, and, they were, and they were okay with it. What you don't want to sound off is like you're using Using, using, using people, and the best way to to check that with yourself is check how you feel after you've taken the advice of somebody because your feelings don't 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 lie, and also offer to help so that you can feel how much it, how much better it is to help than actually to be to be helped. Um, and and and, and you know on the other on the other notion that you said we need. There are times that you want to call somebody, but you you kind of restrain yourself. I mean, there's a phone call that I've been to, I've been wanting to make for the last two weeks, and I haven't made it. And I've been I was asking myself, why have I not made this call? Um, and and all of us have have this re restraint or some element of fear of the way they will react. And I'm the first one to own up that there are those times that you feel that actually let me just wait a little bit, and then I will, and then I will ask I will ask this. Uh, I will make this call. There's a call that I need to make, and I've been pondering on it for, for more than more than two weeks. So all of us are human beings at the end of the day. Absolutely, absolutely, Myron. I'd just like to take you back slightly to uh, the comments you made around the interviewing process. Women, we tend to share we. So if I'm sharing my experiences, say in an interview session, I'll 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 tend to say we did this, my team did this, we did this. Comment about that because I know in some circles that may have been taken as a lack of uh, owning, owning up to your responsibilities and also lack of leadership that you're basically one of the had and not uh, taking leadership in a situation. What's your comment on that? Actually, I have the exact script for that question um, on uh, what, is your, what is your role in, in, in this particular instance. And, as I today, today's theme is that nobody can do something on their own, so that's that's fine. But you can always describe what you personally did, and don't be shy about saying that I developed the module that is today used globally at ACCA to check the effectiveness of learning institutions. I did that. I developed it in an Excel sheet. I sent it, and it was adopted as a global standard. And I feel very happy that I can impact the evaluation of institutions in Kenya. And I did that, I, I did that myself. That doesn't sound untrue when I say it, it's, because it is true. Um, I, I, can, I can say that I did it. Um, without, without saying that ACCA would never have been the same if I wasn't there. So the, the, the owning, owning to your success and owning to the things that you've done yourself is something we should really um, 
as you say, step up and just say, I did this. And I applied myself. Because if you apply yourself, you do. And it will show up in the interview in, in, in any case. And you better just own it with the, using the I word after you've used the, after you've recognized that you work within a system and within a team. In other words, we should not shy uh, away from, um, from, from uh, showing up what it is that we've done and talk with pride, but also at the same time give credit, um, I guess, to people that we have worked with. I think it's a typical women thing. As we nurture, we want that inclusivity around ourselves. Thank you very much. Um, sure. I don't see any other questions. At, at this point, I'd like to hand over to Nkirote. Thank you so, so much. Um, Marion, it is really excellent to see you again, to learn so much from you today. Even as you talked about um, uh, the raising of individuals by a village, a society, uh, it got me thinking back, reminiscing how the fact that uh, a person who I live, who I live with right now in my household was partially raised to be the man he is by you. So uh, can I just say a very personal thank you there oh, even before oh, wow. uh, you, and I'll, and I'll come back and tell you what, but really just now to say- we know. As you have oh, lived uh, Marion has has uh, what she has said she has lived it and she has done it for so many years so um, really just to say thank you so much Marion not only um, for what you have taught us today but even for walking the talk over the years um, even as I have listened to you uh, it has just reminded me again that every day I must choose to have an abundance mentality. Um, a, a mentality that um, you give and you receive with generosity. So um, thank you so much for just reminding us all these things, which I know that we already knew, but, um, but some are even new to, to us. And so we are really, really grateful. And we look forward to having you again. Uh, the presentation was so succinct, so eye-opening. Um, everyone has been left with one or two questions or some homework they must do for themselves. So uh, thank you so much for that. Um, and, and ladies, just saying uh, thank you so much for making time today to be here. Catherine, our chair, um, always uh, leading us so well. Winnie, uh, for moderating excellently. Uh, and every one of us for just uh, taking the time this evening uh, to have this discussion. And don't let the discussion die away. Uh, if you have questions, uh, about what we discussed today, or even a comment or something that would encourage uh, Marion or any one of us, please send it in and we will still respond, we'll still pass on the messages. Uh, please continue to join us. We have had great programs over the last uh, few weeks and there's still more to come. So when we put them out there, please take time and, uh, and come uh, the we graduated the virtual class of the corporate governance program, and uh, it was really an exciting opportunity to see uh, those 26 uh, ladies or so uh, graduating and, uh, and uh, deciding to step up into board leadership. We also had a, a great leadership se uh, session with Yolanda Singh uh, on, on uh, leadership from an equine lens. Uh, all I can say is when it comes back again, please sign up. We really learned a lot. And now uh, there's even an opportunity uh, for, uh, for um, training on board profiling and personal positioning. I know many of you have been asking about this aspect of how do I position myself uh, to, uh, to step up as uh, we've discussed today to undertake um, board positions. How do I profile myself appropriately? Not just for the normal day-to-day -day work that I do, but actually to sit on a board. And uh, we have a great speaker, uh, uh, in fact, a trainer um, called uh, Pun Tian Kwao. We, uh, we call him TP, just to make it simple, from Malaysia. We have interacted with him uh, in our Global Women on Boards uh, program. Um, and he is excellent. He's an ex-principal from Corn Ferry, which 
does a lot of work in this area of uh, recruiting and leadership. And he's now um, a founder and principal of uh, TP Pan Advisory. And he's taking time out on the 8th and 10th of July uh, to actually take us through this workshop. Um, the flyer is up there for you. Uh, please do get in touch with us and let us know if you would like to go through uh, the program. There are limited uh, spaces uh, because he will only take a class of so many. And so please do let us know as soon as you can if you would like to join. I've already signed up. Catherine, have you heard? I've already signed up, so I'm good. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm happy to invite you to, to join in. Um, there are a number of you who are visitors and or have come to join us for the very first time, uh, you are so welcome. This network loves having more and more people coming in uh, to interact with because as we, as we share, we grow and we learn uh, from day to day from, uh, from one another. Um, I know Jael promised me she'd dial in from Switzerland today and I'm so happy to have you on board Jael uh, with, with her comment about really how women in Kenya have really taken the bold step to take our place in society um, and really the struggles they're even having in Switzerland. But join us, Jael, and, and uh, even invite others amongst your network to be with us now that we're doing a lot more virtual classes from wherever you are, you are very, very welcome. Uh, the network uh, still is there for you. It's a membership uh, network. Uh, we do have a joining fee, um, a very modest joining fee, which actually we've kept the same since um, we launched and, um, and an annual subscription fee, but the benefits continue to be there and we will continue looking out for opportunities for you to learn, to grow and to take the next level in your leadership capacity. So, um, Thank you again. We, we will let you know when the next webinar will be happening. Uh, please do interact with us even in the meantime. And um, I'll hand back to Winnie because I hear there is a photograph that is to be taken. But ladies, uh, keep well, keep safe during this time. God bless you. And uh, Winnie, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nkirote. That's the way uh, we do it at uh, Women on Boards Network. And we always make sure that we take a photo uh, for, the, um, for, for our records, for our memory, and also to remind us what it is that we did during COVID. So our request, and by the way, we had uh, 59 participants on this uh, session. That's really, really awesome. So please keep signing up. I request you to unmute yourselves. Uh, Hannah, where are you? Please tell us what, how we need to do this. Hannah is leading us in this session. Yeah, please put the lipstick on. This, there are no masks on this one. I think you have your video on and put on your best smile. Hello. <laughs> please turn on your video. We still have some ladies of Sarah, Pamela. Anna, let us know when to smile. Thank you. I'm taking the photos. You can be smiling. Let us know when to unfreeze the smiles. <laughs> I just need a minute more so that I take everyone. Okay. So.
What are we supposed to do? <laughs> Just smile. Oh, Catherine! No. <laughs> I think I have a to our heart. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, Anne. <laughs> Get in touch, Anne. Sorry? Get in touch. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll get in touch offline. <laughs> okay. Good to see you, though. Thank you. Thank you. I've taken the photos, Winnie. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, Marion. God bless. Have, Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marion. Thank you, everybody. Me. Thanks, Winnie. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye. Thanks, everyone.